If you're an investor in the car industry, you might want to stick around. There's a sticky situation brewing and I'm going to update you on it. Detroit automakers and the United Auto Workers Union appear to be making a little progress during the talks on Wednesday, the sixth day of the scheduled strike. General Motors president Mark Royce wrote an editorial for the Detroit Free Press that may have made things a little bit worse. You see, the idea that General Motors does not pay its workers a respectable wage or that it can easily finance the UAW's demands are two of the myths that Royce took issue with. With regards to GM's pay, the company has stated, in our current proposal, we're offering a 20% wage increase, including for temporary employees who make up only 6% to 10% of our workforce. This equates to a starting salary of around $82,000 per year for roughly 85% of the already represented workforce. The median household income, meanwhile, is $51,821 in the nine regions where GM operates large assembly facilities. Overtime pay and perks would bring the annual salary of the 85 percentile workforce to above $150,000. With the record profits, we are investing in the future of our business and our employees. Net income for GM in 2022 was $9.9 billion. And they continue to state, that is not an outlier result. Over the past decade, we've generated $65 billion in net income and invested $77 billion. This includes our plants in Detroit, Hamtramck, and Oregon, Michigan, Toledo and Defiance, Ohio, and Rochester, New York, all of which are investments in our EV future. So now, although most of the insiders in the auto industry did not anticipate a resolution this week, the length of the UAW strike is still a significant unknown. An important time for GM, Ford, and Stellantis could be jeopardized if the United Auto Workers strike lasts longer than four weeks. The stocks of the Detroit 3 have not experienced a panic selling event just yet in the past six weeks. It may come to a surprise, but the three automakers, GM, Ford, and Stellantis, have all beaten the S&P 500 index during the past year. And of course, investors reduced their stake in August as the UAW demands gained traction. Do you own any of these stocks? If so, let me know down in the comments below.